हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर प्रियंका आई एम स्टार्टिंग दिस न्यू सीरीज ऑफ पैथोलॉजी क्लासेस स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम रॉबिन्स चैप्टर्स सो दिस इज एन दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट द चैप्टर वन ऑफ रॉबिन्स एंड हैव डिवाइडेड चैप्टर वन इनटू वेरियस पार्ट्स एंड लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द चैप्टर वन these videos will be helpful for mbbs students pg preparation students md bds mds and uh, lab technicians also so what is pathology pathology is study of diseases a uh, human genome contains around 3.2 billion dna base pairs around 20000 proteins are coding genes which is about 1.5% of the genome and remaining 98.5% does not encode for any protein the difference between a uh, two individual human uh, genome lies in this 98.5% of the genome that does not code any protein that is why this this uh, region which does not code any protein was called as a dark matter because it was mystery for many years but now it is evolving and it is uh, an uh, hot topic uh, which are, which is coming these days this is an picture which is taken from robins uh, this is a cell having a nucleus and a central nucleolus at light microscopic level we pathologist often describe nucleus as an hyperchromatic nuclei having dense chromatin or vesicular nuclei with opened up chromatin what does this actually mean we we'll learn about this so uh, this is an heterochromatin so heterochromatin where the chromatin is dense and coiled up and it is transcriptionally inactive whereas euchromatin this uh, is an lighter area of the nucleus where chromatin is opened up and it is ready for transcription it's in chromosome uh, having in p arm which is in short arm and q arm which is a long arm chromatids are connected at centromeres here and this centromere helps in equal chromosome segregation at metaphase the telomeres are present at the end of the chromosome it helps in repeated chromosomal replications and cell divisions if mutated then it leads to cancer chromatin fibers in chromosomes these chromatin fibers in the chromosomes comprised of a string of nucleosomes this is a string of nucleosome that is why it is called as a string of bead appearance and a nucleo this is an one nucleosome which are connected by the dna linkers so this nucleosome is composed of a central octameric histone core which is owned around by the dna so there's an centrally there's an histone core which is surrounded or it is owned around by the long dna uh, the dna is around 1.8 meters long and the nucleus diameter is 7 to 8 microns so uh, uh, this uh, 1.8 meters long uh, can accommodate into such a small area by this uh, mechanism this is an pre mrna uh, promoters uh, promoters helps uh, initiate the transcription whereas enhances modulate the gene expressions pre mrna is converted to the mrna by splicing method where introns are removed and this mrna is formed having an open reading frame with 5 dash untranslated region and 3 dash untranslated region finally this mrna is translated into an protein the major classes of non protein coding sequences are promoter and enhancers these are the binding sites for transcription non coding rnas such as micro rnas and long non coding rnas we'll learn about them in further slides transposons are the jumping genes which can move around the genome during evolution resulting in variable copy number and positioning telomeres are present at the chromosome ends and centromeres helps in segregation of the chromosome so next is genetic variation there are many genetic variation many genetic variations are located in this non protein coding regions and two humans are identical by 99.99.5% 99 
and we differ only by 0.5 percent. So, uh, individual variations including differential susceptibility to diseases and environmental stimuli is encoded in this 0.5 percent only which means some individuals are susceptible to some diseases and uh, having the same sex and same age but the other individual is not susceptible to some disease this is because of the variation present in this 0.5 percent of our dna which means 99.5 percent of our dna are identical with the other individuals because of this 0.5 percent of our dna variations some uh, we are susceptible to some of the diseases the two most common forms of dna variations are single nucleotide polymorphism and copy number variations single nucleotide polymorphisms are variants which are present at single nucleotide positions and they are always biallelic which means only two choices exist for their variations such as either at a or t or c or g and single nucleotide polymorphism can occur anywhere in the genome like introns and exons and 1% of the single nucleotide polymorphism occurs in the coding regions. So, this kind of variation is just by chance because coding region is only about 1.5% of the genome. And some of the single nucleotide polymorphisms are neutral which have no gene functions which has no uh, genetic expressions. But some of some sometimes these neutral single nucleotide polymorphisms are used as a marker if they are co-inherited with some disease associated polymorphisms whereas copy number variations these variations are of large contiguous stretches of dna and uh, varying from thousand base pairs to million base pairs and copy number variations are responsible for uh, responsible for 5 to 24 million base pair difference between any two individuals and 50 percent of the copy number variations involve gene coding sequence so this type of variation underlie in phenotypic diversity matlab 50 percent of the time variation is because of copy number variations so most of the time the variations are because of this copy number variations only whereas single nucleotide polymorphism was only one percent chance which was which is expected to be just by a chance uh, despite of knowing all these advances about uh, dna variations and uh, this human genetic variations are not just because of these variations or genetic inheritance. There is something else called as an epigenetics. So, what is epigenetics? Epigenetics are heritable changes in gene expressions that are not caused by variations in DNA sequences. This is a picture taken from Robbins. So, this is a nucleosome having a central histone protein core surrounded by the DNA. So, this is an octameric histone. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and this side, uh, there is again 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a histone core surrounded by this DNA and DNAs are uh, attached by the DNA linkers. So, we are talking about the heterochromatin and euchromatin. So, heterochromatin is an inactive form of chromatin where the DNA is wound around the histone whereas euchromatin which is an active form where dna starts opening up and this unwound form of dna is ready for transcription so uh, what are the histone modifications uh, first one is histone methylation lysine and arginines can be methylated and methylation can lead to Either this, uh, this lysine and uh, if lysine and arginine undergoes methylation, this can lead to either transcriptional activation or repression. Whereas histone acetylation, lysine undergoes acetylation by histone acetylase transferase enzyme, where uh, chromatin opens up and transcription starts, and the same process is reversed by histone deacetylases, leading to chromatin condensation. Histone phosphorylation, 
serine undergoes phosphorylation and this can lead to either uh, chromatin opening or chromatin condensation which means activation or repression of transcription and dna methylation uh, DNA methylation is regulated by methyl transferases, demethylating enzymes and methylated DNA binding protein and DNA methylation always leads to transcriptional silencing. The next is microRNA. Uh, the types of RNAs are either coding RNA or non-coding RNA. Coding RNA, uh, example for coding RNA is messenger RNA and non-coding RNAs are, there are many non-coding RNAs and microRNA is one among the non-coding RNA. So microRNAs are the small non-coding regions in the RNA of 20 to 22 nucleotide. Post-transcriptional silencing of gene expression is the fundamental mechanism of microRNA. Function of microRNA under normal physiological condition is cell proliferation, differentiation and apoptosis. Human diseases related in microRNAs were characterized in CLL as of now. Synthesis of microRNA, uh, these steps of this microRNA synthesis are divided into roughly transcription, so uh, the processing which takes place in the nucleus and then uh, microRNA which is exported from the nucleus, then processing takes place in the cytoplasm, then finally silencing occurs. So this is a nucleus where the initial processing takes place. So trans this is an uh, M microRNA. So transcription of microRNA produces a primary microRNA. Primary microRNA is converted to pre microRNA. This free microRNA is exported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm where Dicer then trims this pre microRNA into a single stranded microRNA and this single stranded microRNA then aggregates or it is associated with this risk complex RNA induced silencing complex okay and then subsequently this complex, this microRNA along with this risk complex attaches to the target mRNA. Target mRNA comes and gets attached to this, uh, uh, this complex. So uh, later on either uh, transcriptional, translational repression occurs or mRNA cleavage occurs thereby gene silencing. Long non-coding RNAs, long non-coding RNAs exceeds the coding mRNA by 10 to 20 folds and this long non-coding RNAs modulate the gene expression in many ways. We will see what are the functions of this long non-coding RNA and the best known example of this long non-coding RNAs is physiological repression of uh, GIST gene. So long non-coding RNA the first function is it helps in transcription or gene activation. So this long non-coding RNAs facilitates the transcription factor and helps in gene activation or the same process is reversed uh, and then uh, gene suppression takes place. Uh, th and the third mechanism is uh, histone modification. So histone modification is uh, uh, long non-coding RNA helps in histone modifications by methylation or acetylation or it helps in assembly of protein complexes that is long non-coding RNA acts as a scaffolding it stabilizes the secondary and tertiary structure of the DNA that in which influences the chromatin architecture or gene activity. Gene editing is an evolving topic in the genetics. So gene editing is uh, basically to make a precise target changes to the genome. This is done by CRISPR-Cas9 complex. CRISPR stands for clustered regulatory interspersed short palindromic sequences or repeats and Cas9 is stands for CRISPR associated genes. The function of CRISPR-Cas9 complex for initially this CRISPR Cas9 complex initially it was discovered in bacteria where they protect themselves against phages and plasmids. 
so this is an bacteria having its own dna and this is an phage having this dna so this invading dna from the phages or ion plasmids is cut into small fragments and these fragments get incorporated into this bacterial dna and these are uh, at the crisp crispr loci okay this is called as a crispr loci and this gets incorporated into the bacterial dna and now these are called as an crispr rna this crispr rna is then transcribed into grna which is called as a guide rna and this guide rna binds to crispr cas9 complexes leading to the destruction so this grna has again two regions which is called as a constant region and variable region constant region binds to the cas9 complexes various variable region binds to target dna so when this cas9 complex system binds to this grna double stranded dna breaks occurs and thereby destruction of the invading dna whenever there is again repeated assault so this is a kind of adaptive immunity seen in the bacteria the same mechanism has been used for gene editing so this is a target genomic sequence which is a double stranded dna and this is a guide rna this is complete cas9 protein so this cas9 protein comes and attaches here and leads to the double stranded dna breaks and this double stranded dna break is repaired then so uh, repair occurs by again two methods non homologous end joining non humble the uh, repair which occurs by non homologous end joining is not a good type of repair because it can lead to errors and later mutation and cancer can develop this kind of repair is a good type of repair this is called as an homology directed repair okay hdr stands for homology directed repair where homologous donor dna so this is an beech mein this is an homologous dna donor dna this homologous donor dna attaches to the target uh, dna by crispr cas9 complexes and this dna is repaired by homologous end joining by using an homologous dna recombination so this type of repair has a capacity to introduce precise changes in the dna inherited genetic diseases can be repaired precisely by this mechanism thank you